Lux presents Hollywood. <music> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And whenever you see a star on a dressing room door in our motion picture studios, you can rest assured in these dressing rooms of glamorous screen beauties, the favorite beauty care is Lux Toilet Soap. Refreshing Lux facials bring such quick new beauty to skin. It's no wonder that our loveliest Hollywood stars are devoted to Lux Soap for their daily beauty care. Now, Captain Carey, USA. Starring Charlton Heston as Webb Carey and Wanda Hendricks as Julia. In northern Italy, there's an ancient landmark. A palace built on an island, surrounded by a beautiful lake. It's the Palazzo di Cresci. And over the centuries, it's been the scene of good and evil, of romance and despair. In 1944, when Nazi troops were in the village of Belmonte, the castle was occupied by an old countess and her granddaughter, Julia. But beneath the castle, in a forgotten wine cellar, was the headquarters of two American officers, members of the OSS. They'd been operating out of there for months, organizing the Italian partisans. But one night, they were portrayed and their work ended in a burst of German rifle fire. It's a long way from the Palazzo to a shop window in New York. But this is the real beginning of our story, when Webb Carey and a girl pause to look at some paintings. Come along, Webb. Father's waiting for us. Oh, please, Nancy, it's that painting. I've seen that before. Really? I had a long talk last night with Father. I told him that I was in love with you and you were. He said he felt the same way about Mother after he came back from his war. And what you need is a job. Hmm? Oh, Nancy, uh, I want to speak to someone about that painting. Oh, very well, dear. Let's go in. Yes, sir? About that painting in the window, the Palazzo di Cresci. Ah, I see you know Italian history. The more recent Italian history. Oh, we've been very fortunate. The Italian government doesn't usually allow treasures like this to leave the country. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? An outstanding work by Bellini, madame. In Bellini's time, the de Cresci's were the ruling family in northern Italy. Last week, we refused an offer of $30,000 from a museum. $30,000? Where did you get this painting? Uh, through our agent, sir, in Switzerland. Where did they get it? Uh, forgive me, but are you an accredited art dealer? No. Well, then I'm sorry, sir. I'm unable to give you any further information. Webb, I don't understand. Why are you so interested? Because two people died, a man and a girl, and I spent three years in a hospital, and because you won't have to worry about me getting a job. I've got one now, in Italy. What kind of a job? Finding the man who sold this painting. But why? Because I'm going to kill him. Luigi! Luigi, don't you remember me? I remember, Signor Lamercano. You have come back. You don't seem overjoyed to see me. You were once. Many things in our village have changed since the war, Signor. You have just arrived? Yes, the bus from Milano. It was the same back there in the plaza. Somebody recognized me and all the people disappeared. I mind my business. I'm glad I found you here at the lake. I want you to row me over to the island, to the palazzo. Get in the boat. No questions? You're not even surprised to see me? It does not matter, senor. Get in the boat. Come in, senor. Giovanni said you wanted to see the head of the house. Huh? To talk about a painting? I'm sorry, the palazzo is not open to tourists. I'm not a tourist. My name's Webster Carey. I am Carlo de Cresci. You, you don't look like her. Like her? Your sister, Julia. In here, please. My grandmother will see you. 
This is the man who asked about the painting? Uh, Signor Carey, Nona. Good afternoon. A painting by Bellina, Contessa. This is a photograph of it. Oh, remarkable. It is our island. This island. But as it was many years ago. You're familiar with the painting, Contessa? You've seen it before. No, Mr. Carey. Why should I have... Because it's one of a half dozen paintings that Major Williams and I discovered, and your granddaughter, Contessa. Julia? We came across them one night while we were trying to find a place to hide our equipment. Oh, so you are one of the Americans who hid here. It was quite a shock to learn that our home was being used as your headquarters. When did you find out we were hiding in your cellars, Contessa? After the Germans came, of course. But what has all this to do with... The painting, please. No one knew about the existence of that hiding place except the three of us. Julia, the Major, and me. And the man who betrayed us to the Nazis. Julia's dead, so's the Major. And all I've got to go on is that the man who smuggled the painting out of the country is the man who betrayed us. I'm going to find him. Why? Why? Because Julia would be alive. And... Julia is alive, Mr. Carey. Alive? Through those doors. You find her out on the terrace. Julia! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Webb. What's the matter? Aren't you glad to see me? Webb, uh, this is a... This is my husband, Baron de Griffey. I think I understand, darling. You will leave us for a few moments, please? No, no, no. I think I should... I, I will explain to Mr. Carey. Now, please, do as I say. Julia, wait! Senor, you wish to embarrass my wife? No, of course not. Sit down, Mr. Carey. I know your name because Julia's brother told me you were calling. Signor, I know how she once felt about you. She has told me herself many times. The romance of a young girl swept off her feet by the heroic American. The secret hiding places, the meetings at midnight. Oh, she laughs about it now. You don't have to say anything more. Please don't blame Julia. You understand that she... You are leaving, Signor? About the painting, Mr. Carey. Well? You say it is valuable. What are we to do? When you lose something you thought was valuable? I don't know, Contessa. Bleed a little and forget, I suppose. Mr. Carey, please. I am afraid I have offended you. Hey, Capitan. Un momento. Lenati. Oh, it is you. A Lazarus risen from the dead. <laughs> oh, am I the first to greet you in the name of the partisans? Oh, you look good, baby. Come, we walk out together. I'm leaving, too. Professional call or what? Yeah, one of the servants. Fascinating case. Croup. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, how can you possibly be alive? They killed you down there. No, no, not quite. They decided I was worth keeping alive. They thought I'd talk. Maybe I would have. But then our paratroops captured their hospital train. And when you? Oh, <laughs> I arranged it more easily. I was in Milano when the raid came. I just stayed there. <laughs> now, what are you doing now, huh? You're married? What brings you back uh, here? I'm a civil engineer with no job, and I'm not married, and, and I don't know exactly what did bring me back. Was it to find the traitor? That was the general idea. Hey, Captain, as a doctor, let me tell you this, huh? Vengeance cures nothing. Nothing. Now, how do you get back to the village? Luigi's waiting for me. He rode me over. I must stay on the island for a while. I have other calls to make. I'll see you later. Oh, most certainly, my friend. Hey, listen to me, huh? Some American girl will mend your heart. You will become married and have 20 children. <laughs> Tonight, maybe I'll stop by the hotel. We drink some wine, huh? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You did not visit at the Palazzo for long, senor. Hey, Luigi, tell me something. The village, why did the people go away when they saw me? You brought death once, senor. You might bring it again. Death? After the raid, the Germans searched the village. They take men, 27 men. They lined them up and killed them. They said, we helped you. Who betrayed us, Luigi? Everybody in the village knows his name. My son, my son Mario. Mario? But Mario didn't know where we were. The people do not believe him. They drive him through the streets, they beat him to death. 
For seven days, they left him hanging from a tree. Why did they think he was guilty? Because the night before the raid, Mario brought a message to one of the German officers. From whom? From the betrayer, senor. Who was it? Who gave him the message? They do not let my son talk. You must help me, senor. You must find who sent the message. Please, senor, help me. Help me. Only Mario knew. Now he's dead. You did not talk like this before. There's nothing I can do. Mario's dead, yes, but his wife and child. Serafina, who gave you food at the farm. And the boy, Pietro. Pietro is bigger now, senor. Pietro, the son of the traitor. Who gave Mario the message? This I don't know. But there is much I can tell you. It doesn't matter now, Luigi, not to me. Take me back to the village. The room is ready, signor. Any time you wish to go upstairs. Thanks, Sandro. Mr. Carey. That under Graffy, that's what Luigi Giulia said, isn't it? That is correct, signor. May I please have a word with you? Yes, sit down. Thank you. Being back here again must be quite exciting for you, meeting all your old friends. Many of them are dead. I spent most of the war in Switzerland, diplomatic service. I couldn't join you here in the fight. You were privileged. I was drafted. That was an interesting story you told us before. I'm glad you liked it. The de Cresci had nothing to do with the sale of the painting, I assure you. Julia told us about those forgotten rooms in the cellar, but when we returned after the war, they were empty. This is the first we've heard of the value of the paintings. Of course, we'd like to recover them. I'm not stopping you, but they don't interest me anymore. And if... And if... And if you want the truth, I have no interest in this town or the palazzo or the people in it, including your wife. That's what you really want to hear, isn't it? War does different things to different people. You, it has hurt. But it has given me a chance to be happy. How easily it might have been the other way. Let's just blame it on the Germans. Now, if you'll excuse me, Baron, I'm going upstairs. Wait. I just left your husband. I don't think he'd approve. It doesn't matter. I wanted to leave without seeing you again. Leave? There's a bus back to Milano tonight. Don't tell me you want me to stay. No, no, I want you to leave. But as a friend. That's why I came here. And there are so many questions. Questions? That... <laughs> yeah, there's one I'd like to ask, one I can't answer. Are you happy? I'm trying. That's a good answer. I'll do the same, I promise. I'll try as hard as I can. Oh, well, why did you come back? Because I thought you were dead, because the one who betrayed us might be alive. Uh, maybe it was seeing the painting of the island that made me lonesome. Or maybe I like Sandra's spaghetti. You take your pick, Baroness. Can't we even talk, Webb? What do you want from me, a wedding present? All I want is that you try to understand. Is that asking too much? The night of the raid. The last thing I remember was you on the floor. When I woke up... I was in a concentration camp with my grandmother. We were there for months. I kept asking for you day and night. And she told me you were dead. I wouldn't believe her. And then one day, they let us go and we made our way into Switzerland. Yeah, good for you. Rocco was there. I'd known him ever since I was a little girl. He, he used to visit us during the war. Grandmother had always wanted me to marry him. Simple. So you did? No, 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 not then. I had the crazy hope I'd hear from you. And then... When we came home after the war, I, I found this in the cellar. The Medal of St. Christopher I'd given to you. And then I knew you were dead. May I have that back? I was hoping you'd want it. That little cross I gave you? Here. You're still wearing it? Yes. If anyone asks me where I got this medal, I'll say from a friend... Uh, friend who died in the war, you can say the same, okay? Okay. Peace. It's wonderful. Goodbye, Webb. Goodbye. Signor. Signor. Well? Quickly, Signor. Come, come quickly. Well, you told me the bus wasn't No, 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 not the bus, Signor Luigi. Luigi's dead with a knife. And you, Dr. Lunati, what can you tell us about this? You are the police commissioner. I tell you all I know. 
They called me to the hotel. When I called got you, there, who called you? Uh, I did, Senor. I did. That's right. I told Sandro to get Doctor Lenati as quickly as he could. Continue, Doctor. The poor fellow was dead when I got there. Apparently, he started up the stairs. Someone was waiting for him in the landing. I have the weapon here. OSS knife. So, from the war. That's right. We all had these knives, Commissioner. <laughs> I used the mine to prune the trees until I lost it. Well, nothing more I can do? Uh, not for now, Doctor. Thank you. Sandro. See, si, see. Si. You saw Luigi come into your hotel. Well, uh, I'm at the desk. He comes to me. He asks for the American. Who else saw him? Who else? Okay, who else? Uh, Giovanni, Lucia. Okay, who knows? Giovanni? From the Palazzo, signore. A servant. They come every day to the village for the mail. I'm checking my accounts, but I can't see everybody. And maybe the Baroni was there also. Signore Baroni? But I don't know for sure. Who else, Sandro? But it's, 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 it's... Well, uh... The Baroness, she came in through the courtyard. Uh, she also wanted to talk to Senor Carey. She left before it happened. Senor, why did Luigi come to see you? Well, do you know? No. No, I don't know. Then until we find out, I must ask you to remain here in the village. Don't worry, Commissioner. Nothing could drive me away now. <laughs> We'll continue with Act Two of Captain Carey, USA, in a few moments. Now here's Libby Collins with the Lux Movie News. Hi, Ken. Tonight's picture is a thriller diller, an adventure film with an exotic background. It's Tropic Zone, Paramount's Technicolor melodrama starring Ronald Reagan, Rhonda Fleming, and Estelita. Isn't Rhonda the owner of a banana plantation in this picture, Libby? Yes, but her plantation grows nothing but trouble. You see, she has an enemy plotting to steal her land. And he almost succeeds until Rhonda hires Ronald Reagan, a soldier of fortune, to investigate. And he rescues Rhonda from her troubles. Yes, but it almost costs Reagan his life. He's caught in a mysterious raging fire. His fight proves worthwhile, though, because Tropic Zone ends with Ronald Reagan winning the heart of Lux lovely Rhonda Fleming. Well, Libby, there's another of Rhonda's pictures that is big, big news. That's her photograph in this month's magazines, showing Rhonda wearing a gorgeous mink coat. And here's the news, ladies. You, yes, you can win a gorgeous mink coat just like you see on Rhonda in the photograph. Oh, you're talking about the wonderful Lux Soap Contest with all those exciting prizes of luxurious mink coats, stoles, and scarves. Yes, Lux Toilet Soap is offering $150,000 in mink prizes in four weekly contests. All in all, there are 20 magnificent mink coats, 40 beautiful mink stoles, 300 luxurious mink scarves. And all such beautiful, silky mink, styled by famous Annis Furs. It's easy to enter these contests. Just write 25 additional words or less to complete the statement... I like Lux Toilet Soap because... With each entry, enclose two wrappers from any size Lux Soap. Mail to Lux Contest, Box 3, New York 46, New York. Send in lots of entries every week for more chances to win your mink. But hurry, entries for this week's contest must be postmarked by Sunday midnight. See entry blanks at most grocers for detailed rules, but you can write your entry now, tonight, on plain white paper. Just complete the statement, I like Lux Toilet Soap because, in 25 additional words or less. Mail to Lux Contest, Box 3, New York 46, New York. Hurry, get Lux Toilet Soap. Enter this week's contest now. You may be the Lux lovely girl who wins a gorgeous mink coat. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Captain Carey, USA, starring Charlton Heston as Webb and Wanda Hendricks as Julia. It's a few moments later. Outside the police station, Dr. Lenati is waiting for Webb Carey. They want for you to stay here, Captain? Yeah. Listen, baby, I'm going to go to Milano. I know a lawyer, a good lawyer. Why would I need a lawyer? Doc, that knife, I recognized it. it belonged to Frank, to Major Williams. So? Whoever found the painting also found the knife. The betrayer and Luigi's killer are the same. All right, suppose you're right. How you find him? Luigi suspected somebody. Luigi's dead. His son's wife is. What, Serafina? She must know something. Oh, baby, don't be foolish. If she knew, she would have shouted from the rooftops long ago. 
No, take my advice. Leave the past alone. This afternoon, Luigi said there were 27 dead men demanding justice. When they killed his son, that made 28. Now it's 29. Be careful, sweetheart, lest it become 30, huh? Yes, it's such an honor, such a great honor. Please be seated. Senor Kerry will be done at once. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Kerry. Yes, Sandro just said a great honor. Sandro has been kind enough to lend us use of his office. We will be alone. Hmm? Oh, oh, si, si, Contessa, si. Such an honor, such a pleasure. I have come, among other things, to apologize. No? I was told that last night, after you had been questioned by the police... Some of the people of this village attacked you. Yes, after Dr. Lenati left. It, it didn't last long. You were insulted. You were stoned. In a sense, I am the head of the village, so I beg you to accept my apologies. They could not have realized what they were doing. Just a reminder to me that I'm not very popular around here. They believe you bring bad luck, but you won't be molested anymore. You mean because I'm leaving here? Partly that... Partly because but I... But I'm not leaving. Not yet. Mr. Carey, Julia was very young when you fell in love with her. Young girls form romantic attachments very quickly. Now, she's grown up and happily married. I'm sure of it. Baron de Greffy has a most distinguished political career before him. The marriage binds two houses of strength and merit. This is the proper arrangement of things, a sort of mathematical equation. I realize that isn't so, perhaps, in America. No, ours is a little more chemical. A girl picks her own husband. By experiment, Mr. Carey, I wish you good luck and a pleasant trip home. <laughs> Call up your dog, Serafina. Call him off. Catch that dog and I shoot. I warn you for the last time. Get out. Don't you recognize me? The captain, the American. I know who you are. Then tell your dog to lay off and put down your rifle. Nito, vieni qui. Vieni. First Mario. Now Luigi. Murder is all of you. Sure, sure. Come to sunny Italy and have the time of your life. What do you want? It's a long walk to the farm here. I don't want to leave till I've talked to you. I have nothing to talk about. I'm your friend, Serafino. I was Mario's friend, and I don't believe he was guilty. Please, trust I me. I trust no one. Go, or I turn the dog loose again. Okay. When your boy, when Pietro asks why he grew up a traitor's son, you tell him you wouldn't talk to an American. Oh. Per favore, Capitano, please. I am sorry. It's all right. I understand. Come. Come, we talk on the porch. For years, they... Treat us like criminals, Pietro and me. When I send him to school, he comes home covered with blood. The other children hit him with stones. Now Luigi is dead. No friends left. I'm still here, Serafina. What can you do? Luigi was killed because he came to the hotel to tell me something. Do you know what it was? I do not know. Did he ever say anything about a painting? Painting. Now, think hard. It's very important. No. They say Mario delivered a message to a fascist officer. They lie. Mario hated the fascisti. He was not yes, a traitor. Yes, I know that. The one who gave him the message was the traitor. Who was Mario with before he left? I do not know. Sandro, Dr. Lenardi, one of the partisans? You've got to remember. I do not know. Listen, Serafina, you've had years to think about this. You must suspect someone, someone in the village. No one in the village. In the palazzo? Don't be afraid, Serafina. You don't tell me. I can't help you. There's someone at the gate. Julia. I've got to see. Keep that dog quiet. Eshinito, Tito, Vaterona alla stala. How did you know I was here? Dr. Lenati told me. I wanted to hear what Serafina had to tell you. I say nothing. Not to her. You can trust Julia. She believes Mario was innocent. Remember, she was betrayed, too. Fascisti. Everyone in Palazzo. Look, I know you've suffered more than anyone else, but Julia and her family suffered, too. They were in a concentration camp. But they get out. They were not touched. And I tell you why. Because of the brother. Carlo? We were here fighting. He was in Germany. You do not believe, huh? Then ask her. Yes, it is true. Carlo was in Germany. A German prisoner condemned to death. Do they kill him? 
No. Others they kill, not you and your family. You are back in the palazzo. You are rich. Serafina, we weren't all killed. You're alive, so am I, and all this gossip... Then why do the fascisti and people from the black market come to the palazzo in secret at night? That's not true. Last month, I see a man, Luigi Rowe, across the lake in his barca. I don't know what she's talking well, about. What about the man? Luigi, say, from Milano. He stayed at the albergo, the hotel, same as you. Do you remember what day it was? I remember. It was day after Pietro's birthday. The last day of June. The last day of June. That seems to mean something to you. Yes. Yes, that night. No, no, my grandmother had one of her attacks. And we were all up until dawn. If there'd been a visitor, I would have seen him. How long did he stay at the palazzo? Luigi say one hour. When he come back, he carries something, a bundle, a package. What did he look like? I come to the village for Luigi. I see the man get out of the boat. I know see his face. All right, one more question, Serafina. Did he wear shoes? Shoes. That's a strange question. In the village, there's a blind man, Marco. See, he, he play music and beg for he, pennies. Yes, during the war, he helped us all. His, his music used to warn us. Well, maybe he was warning me again this morning. He told me to ask Serafina about a man with bare feet. The man with the Luigi shoes? I do not look. Yeah, I'll go back to the village. I'm very grateful to you. Oh, what can I do? Nothing. Nothing. I'll be back again. I, I have a car out there. Thanks. So your brother was in prison. I didn't know that. It's not true what Serafina told you. I won't have you suspecting me or my family. Maybe I can find the truth in Milano. Then I'll go to Milano with you. Oh, that's fine. I'm sure your husband will like that. He'd like it even less if he knew that people are suspecting us of entertaining men from the black market or his trace. Well, you know him better than I do, but you're not going with me. I'm more involved in all of this than you are. If you won't let me help you, then I'll do what I can by myself. All right, then. Go back to the island, make some excuse. Meantime, I'll try to find out who stayed at Sandra's hotel on the 30th of June. Pick me up there when you're ready. Well, are you ready to tell me? Tell you what? Well, something must have happened. When I went to the hotel to pick you up, Sandro was very upset. He said I'd find you back at Serafina's again. Oh, I took you out of your way. I'm sorry. What happened? There was a detective at the hotel. It seems his job was to make sure I didn't leave without him. So I left through the window. That was very foolish of him. Made a purchase from Sandro, too. His guest list of June 30th. Eight or ten names on it that looked promising. Tourists. All from Milano. Webb, have you already made up your mind about us? Verdict guilty? I haven't taken a ballot yet. Serafina has. Sure. Serafina doesn't make sense. She doesn't know you. Thank you. What are you smiling at? Oh, I... I was just thinking how much like old times this is. You'd better talk about the weather, Berenice. And get us to Milano. Well, any luck? No, nothing. Sixth stop we've made. So far, they've all said they were just seeing the sights. Strangely enough, they all seem to be telling the truth. And they all wore shoes. Oh, Webb, you're just wasting time. Everyone in the village knows the blind man's a little crazy. And how do you know that Serafina hasn't dreamed all this about a, a man from Milano? Because she doesn't sleep that well anymore. Well, we'll soon find out. Three names left. Who's next? Uh, Manfredo Acuto, Via San Morelli, 32. Now, let's get going. And don't forget, I'll do the talking, and my name's Carter. William Carter. See, si, is he there? Your son, uh, William Carter. Palat Inglesi? Si, signore. Acuta's acrobats played all over the world. What can I do for you? You have your gymnasium here? I should be delighted to show you, signora. Oh, he's thinking of booking your act, aren't you, dear? Uh, it's possible, yes. Excelente, excelente. Come with me, please. They are practicing now inside the Fort Cellini brothers. Later, maybe. I want to talk to you privately. Oh, as you wish, signora. I have scrapbooks here on the table. Clippings from all over the newspapers. I'm and... more interested in paintings than in acrobats. Paintings? Some old masters I've bought. I can't seem to get permission to take them out of Italy. <laughs> this is very interesting, signora, but uh, why do you come to me? You manage the acrobats? Si, si, the finest in the world. And you travel from one country to another. Well, 
I was told you could help me get the paintings out, for a price, of course. Oh, but this is not true, senor. Who tells you these things? Mutual friend. He seemed to have had a similar problem with a Bellini in uh, the village of Belmonte. Belmonte? I'm afraid I'm not even acquainted with anyone in Belmonte. Maybe you've just forgotten you met him at the Palazzo on June 30th. June 30th? Belmonte? Ah, yes, yes, of course. I tried to get an engagement for the festival, but I was not at the Palazzo that night. You just said night. How did you know it was night? I didn't say so. And where are your shoes, Akuto? Don't you like shoes? Uh, shoes? Oh, pardon me, senor. It is a habit from the years when I, too, performed. For strong feet, senor, you wear the shoes as little as possible. Yeah, sure. Now, let's get back to the palazzo. Uh, but I know nothing about this business. You're lying, Akuto. You were seen leaving the palazzo. The boatman recognized oh, you. Oh, this is not you true. You stole that painting. No, senor. You stole the painting and you killed Luigi. Luigi? Huh? I do not know what you are talking about. You have no paintings. You are police. No, I'm not police, Akuto, but it's not a bad idea. Excuse me, I'll use your phone. No, no, no. Wait, senor. Please, you are making a big mistake. I do not kill anybody. I'm not a murderer. I smuggled the paintings, yes, but I did not steal you it. You can't prove that you didn't. Prove? But I can, senor. I prove in my office in the safe. What about the safe? I will get you a copy. I made out a receipt. I have the copy. Made out with the creche? The creche? Oh, no, no, senora. Uh, you wait. I bring it to you. No tricks, Akuto. I've got a gun. Tricks? Oh, I just don't want any trouble. I open the safe and I bring you the... I knew I should have dealt you out. I was crazy to let you come along. We... Why did he stop talking? Ask him. Signor. Signor Acuto. You in there? I warned you, I didn't want any... Acuto. Oh, well, a nurse. He's not there. I'm afraid he is. Look, an open window. Whoever did it came and left for the window. And he's gone. What are those papers in his hand? Oh, nothing that even looks like a receipt. That's what the killer came for. Well, the knife. Yes, I know. O-S-S. Signora! Hey, Get out quickly, you down the stairs. Get out 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 the But are you sure that they saw you? Yes, I'm sure. At least two of them saw me. I'm going to stop the car at the next corner. Where? Just do as I tell you. By now, they've given my description to the police. You drive the car back to Belmonte. If you're stopped, you don't know anything about me. You haven't seen me, understand? And you? I have to get back to the hotel before they pin this on me. Now, go on. I'll get back soon. been very quiet, baby. You have deep thoughts, maybe? A few. I still don't understand it, Lenati. Of all the people in Milano, you should just happen to be driving by and just happen to see me. I told you I was going to Milano to find a lawyer. What were you doing in the city? Looking up some people. Any luck? A little. And when we get back, then what? I want to take a look at our old hiding place in the Palazzo Cellar. For what, baby? A long time ago, I left some OSS knives there. Oh, they're gone now, along with the paintings. Yeah, so they tell me. But if the rest of the paintings are still there, then someone's lying right down the line. Someone is lying. But who? You guess, Lenati. I'll wait and see. Now, would someone mind telling me what this is all about? Police officers, guns, flashlights? Baroni de Griff, you, you will forgive us, please. We see you here at the lake. We, we did not recognize you in the dark. I was about to drive the launch back to the island, but if something is wrong... Signore, I... allow me. The Baroni de Greffi, this is Lieutenant Cristoldi of the Milano Police, and Signore Simmons from the American Consulate in Milano. We are looking for a compatriot of mine, Barone, who seems to have gotten into trouble. A compatriot? Not Signor Carey. Yes. You have heard of the death of the boatman, Luigi? A tragedy, Commissioner. So we place Signor Carey under surveillance. It was as much for his own protection. So? He disappeared. Lieutenant Cristoldi can tell you the rest. This afternoon, Signor, in Milano, a man named Acuto is murdered. A man named Cellini telephoned the police. He claimed that Signor Acuto had two strangers in his office, a man and a woman. The man is an American of the same description as Webster Carey. I still say that doesn't mean a thing, Lieutenant. 
Webster Carey was planning anything as, as, as monstrous as this, it, it's highly unlikely he would have called on me first. He... he called on you? Oh, yes, yes, at the consulate a few days ago. He wanted some information regarding the export of painting. Forgive me, signore, but I still don't understand why you think that he We have would... two excellent reasons for wanting him, Baroni. One, because he has disappeared. And two, because shortly after the murder of Signor Acuto, I received a telephone call. He would not give his name, but he said the man who killed Acuto is Webster Carey. Your mysterious informant easily could be the murderer himself, trying to throw you off the track. You can be sure, Signore. There will be no arrest without definite proof and evidence. Signor Carey was of great help to our people during the war. We do not question that, Baroni. Therefore, I am most reluctant to say what I am now compelled to say. You've seen him? Where? Where is he? Surely not the Pilato. No, no. I passed him on the road outside the village perhaps 20 minutes ago. The road toward the border. I tried to call to him, but he was in too much of a hurry. For he was driving a lancia. Telephone. Where is the nearest telephone? Quickly, I will show you. How far to the Swiss border? 60 kilometers. We still have a chance. You can come out of the launch, senor. They are gone. Thanks for the help. I've been running ever since I saw the police in front of the hotel. Well, you're safe for the moment. The roads are full of lanchas, all going fast. Italians like to speed. Why did you lie to them? You should be a great success in politics, Peroni. Let us understand each other, Mr. Carey. Personally, I have no objection to your going to prison. But I cannot afford to have my wife involved in a murder. Where do you get your information? An unimpeachable source, senor. From Julia herself. We all talked things over when she returned this afternoon. And we decided that you should get out of Italy as fast as you can. I am here to see that you do. No descending voice in the family circle? None. Not that I'm ungrateful, Baroni, but I don't like being pushed around by you, or your family, the police, or anybody else. And I don't like people who let innocent men take the blame for the crimes they've committed. So thanks again for your help, but I'm going to stick around and bother people. I'm going to bother people till I find the man who turned us in. And having found him, then would you leave? Then I'll set a speed record. You know a lot of answers, Baroni. Maybe you can help me. I don't know who killed Luigi... I certainly would not know who killed this man, Akuto. But I do know who told the Germans that night in 1944. And I also know, Signor, that Julia is the last person in the world you would harm. Julia? Julia betrayed us? Oh, no, no that, that one I can't accept. It is true. Then she'll have to tell me so herself. She will, Signor. Get back in the launch. You can ask Julia yourself. <laughs> Pietro, oh, I could beat you. Why you come home so late? I hear them talking, Mamina. At the lake, I hear them. The Baron and the American. The one who was here. Talking? The Baron told them, Mamina, the name of the traitor. The Baronessa. <gasps> Julia betrayed to the Germans. Pietro, if you lie. As I'm the son of my father, Mario, I swear it. Julia, the Baron said so. Come, we go to the village. The police? To the partisans, those who are left. Then we cross the lake and kill the traitor. Before we bring you Act Three of Captain Carey, USA, here's Irving Cummings with tonight's guest, Paramount's lovely starlet... Catherine Grandstaff. Hello, Catherine. What's happening at Paramount these days? Well, for one thing, everybody's still laughing at the side-splitting addicts of Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis in that wonderful Hal Wallace comedy, The Stooge. That's the very funny picture which, besides Dean and Jerry, stars Marion Marshall, Eddie Mayhoff, and Polly Bergen. I understand that besides their usual hilarious routines, Dean and Jerry have some moments of very serious drama. That's right. It's a great story of the happiness and heartbreaks of show business. Of course, Dean sings several hit songs in his customary smooth manner. And not to be outdone, Jerry, too, sings several songs in his not-so-smooth manner. Well, besides music and laughs, I know the Stooge has plenty of glamour with two such lovely stars as Marion Marshall and Polly Bergen. They're both devoted Lux girls. When I'm a Lux girl, too, Mr. Cummings. 
I love the way Lux soap facials leave my skin feeling so soft. Yes, Catherine, Hollywood's most glamorous stars agree on this. Daily Lux soap care works wonders for the complexion. It's the gentle toning action in Lux care that gives skin new softness, freshness. So try it, girls. Lux care works so quickly, you'll have lovelier skin with just one cake of Lux. Now, that's a guarantee for any normal skin from Lever Brothers Company. And Lux facials are so easy, Mr. Carpenter. You just cream in the rich lather, rinse warm, splash cold, and it's a joy to see how your skin sparkles. Tomorrow, girls, get Lux toilet soap for your skin. Remember, nine out of ten screen stars use Lux. You'll see, Hollywood's favorite beauty care will make your skin smoother, too. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS Radio Network. And KNX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles. The curtain rises on Act Three of Captain Carey, USA, starring Charlton Heston as Webb and Wanda Hendricks as Julia. In the village of Belmonte, an angry crowd gathered in the plaza. Serafina has told them the news, n- name of the traitor. Meanwhile, Webb and the Baron have returned to the palazzo. You remember Carlo, Mr. Carey, Julia's brother. Good evening, Signore. Good evening. Your sister, where is she? I will tell Julia that you're here. Carlo, where's Giovanni? Uh, I'm not sure where he is. If you should see him, tell him to put the launch in the boathouse. Now, get a drink for Mr. Carey. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Water or soda, Mr. Carey? Doesn't matter, whatever's handy. Carlo, who's Giovanni? He's a valet, Signore. My brother-in-law's servant. Now, if you excuse me, I'll get you a drink. Where is she, Giovanni? The Baronessa. Up the stairs with the old woman. You want her? I'll get her myself. Go down to the cellar, Giovanni. Cellar? Carlo just told me to put the laundry away. And I tell you to go down to the cellar. Carlo said you came back with the Americano. Then you know what has to be done. There will be no trouble, signor. I'll come down with him later. Carlo, something wrong? Uh, no. Your no, grandmother? Nothing. The Contessa is not ill again. I told you, it's nothing. It's very obvious. Why don't you get it off your chest? This much I can't tell you. They will be here any moment. Just do whatever Julia asks you to do. You'll have to tell me more than that. I cannot. I will not. Besides, it's too late. Good evening, Mr. Carey. Contessa. We will talk in here, Julia. Good evening. We can forget the amenities, Julia. Mr. Carey is very anxious to get to the point. Julia, your husband wants me to believe that... that you're the one who told the Germans, the one who betrayed us. Webb, I... I... It's a very simple answer he wants, Julia. You say yes, or you say no. Yes. I don't believe it. You must, because it's true. Why would you betray him? The police may be here any minute. Tell him. A few nights before the raid, I... I told you I had to go to Milano. Do you remember? You told me you were going to get medicine for the Contessa. Yes, but I lied. Carlo was still a German prisoner. I'd heard that he was going to be executed. I went to Milano to plead for Carlo's life. The Nazis agreed to let him go if I would tell him where the OSS were hiding you and Major Williams. She had no choice, Mr. Carey. None whatsoever. Keep out of it. Go on, Julia. Go on. What more do you have to know, Mr. Carey? There is nothing else. Do what you think is right, but go away, I beg of you, go away. If you will allow me, Mr. Carey, there is one more particular. Julia sent a letter to a prominent fascist asking him to arrange a meeting with the German commandant. Mario delivered it. Now will you go? Yes, now I'll go. You have a gun, Mr. Carey? I did have, but I threw it away. You were very wise. I'll have enough explaining to do without accounting for a gun. It's too late. The window, look. There are a dozen boats on the lake. The police already. Or perhaps you are ready to talk to them. No, not yet. Then I'll take you through the cellar. This way, senor. I know the way. Oh, no. No, do not cry. (laughs) 
light is rather dim down here. Be careful, Mr. Kerr. This place has a lot of memories, Barone. If you keep walking down the passage, we'll get out through the greenhouse. I have another boat on the other side of the island. Now, wait a minute, that door. Yes. That's where they killed him, Major Williams. Right at the door where we'd found the painting. We'd better hurry. I'd like to go in and take another look. I wouldn't waste any time, Mr. Kerr. It'll only be a minute. Delay may be fatal. This is where I spent six months of my life. I'd like to refresh my memory. Is there a candle in here? I believe so. Come in, Barone. I thought you said this room was empty. The other paintings, they're still here. And the supplies we'd stored. We were going to give this equipment to the partisans. If you're through reminiscing, senor. Yes, I'm through. And I know now why Julia was lying. She lied to protect you. No, Mr. Carey. Julia was trying to get you to leave to save your life. She knows that if you found your betrayer, I would be left with no alternative. I would be forced to kill you. Just as you killed Luigi and Acuto. As Giovanni killed Luigi and Acuto, I merely supervised. So you're the betrayer. How did you know about our hiding place? I didn't, Mr. Carey. But Julia's grandmother did. When the Contessa learned that Carlo was to be executed, she sent for me. I contacted the Nazis. The arrangements were simple. A single letter innocently delivered by Mario, trading your hiding place for Carlo's life. You see, he is the last of the decretion. You smuggled out that painting of the island? It was very helpful in financing my career. Naturally... I cannot let my illegal sale of paintings and my former connection with the Nazis become known. It would mean the end of everything. I'm sure you can understand my position. Giovanni! He will not leave here, but... <laughs> Contess, I tell you, it's not the police, it's the people of the village. What do they wish, Tato Lunati? I think I know. They've come for me. Julia, no, no. In the name of all the saints, hurry, don't stand here. Go out through the cellar. Go through the cellar. Go with the doctor. Go, Julia. Hurry, they're breaking the door, Don. I'll stay here with Nona. Stop! Stop! I command you to stop! You disgrace the dead! They ask you for justice, not for revenge. I tell you that Julia is not guilty of this thing. Her own husband say it. Get out of the way. Search the house. She must be here. Capitan. Capitan, if you're in the cellar, open the door. Capitan, it's Julia. They want Julia. Webb. Webb. Capitan, open the door. It's her only chance. Baron and Giovanni, grenades, Julia, the hand grenades. They were still there where we'd left them. Webb, they stopped them. They want to kill me. Stay where you are. She must pay. She must hang. Your betrayer is dead. Pietro heard the Barone. He said she was guilty. The Barone... The Baroni lied to me to protect himself. He had Luigi murdered and the man in Milano. He confessed. Then we will find the Baroni. Where is he? You'll find them down there in the passage. De Greffi and Giovanni. Hey, look, he's here. I had no choice, Julia. Giovanni was waiting for me. He'd sent him down here to kill me. Well. Signore. Signore I've told you the truth, Serafina. Mario's memory is cleared, Signore. Pietro will never be called traitor son again. Pietro's father was a patriot. Tell them to go home. The dead can sleep in peace now. Oh, grazie. Grazie. Oh, finalmente. Caro mio figlio. Grazie. Grazie. Zulia, come upstairs. Lenati? Si, Capitan. Get word to the police. Tell them I'm here. They'll be here soon enough, baby. I saw the lights of their boats on the lake. Webb, I was told everything this afternoon when I came back from Milano. My husband, Mr. he... Mr. Kelly, there is something I want to say. Doesn't matter now, Contessa. 
The Barone told me about you. This time, he did not lie. Your punishment is living with yourself. It won't be for long, Signor. Dr. Lunati will confirm that. What did you tell me, Doctor? One month? Two, perhaps? Carlo, come. I... I have no right to ask for anything with... Not even forgiveness. What will you do now? I'm not sure. First, I've got to square myself with the police. That may take a while. Then I'm going home. I want you to take this, Julia. The, the Medal of St. Christopher. But I'll come back when you send it to me. Don't make it too long. Our stars will return. Now here is Ken Carpenter. Chlorodent toothpaste does more to give you a clean, fresh mouth than any other dentifrice. And now here is proof that Chlorodent gives you a healthier mouth, too. In the interest of child health, Chlorodent was tested under the supervision of dentists at Father Flanagan's famous boys' town. In this research, Chlorodent and a fine white toothpaste were used regularly by different groups of youngsters. And in just 60 days, dentists found that three-fourths of the boys using Chlorodent showed dramatic improvement in mouth health. Chlorodent was proved twice as effective as the fine white toothpaste for quickly reducing acute gingivitis, a common mouth ailment. And that's another reason why Lieber Brothers Company unconditionally guarantees that Chlorodent does more for you than any other toothpaste, white, ammoniated, or chlorophyll, to give you a clean, fresh, healthy mouth. Make sure you get the toothpaste used in this Boys Town research. Chlorodent. Here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And for two excellent performances, we'd like them to step forward for a curtain call. Charlton Heston in Wanda Hendricks. you haven't paid us a visit for a long time. What's the meaning of this desertion? Oh, just lots of work, Irving. I've been making pictures in Europe, doing TV in New York, and just lately I've been brushing up on radio, one of my favorite acting mediums. You're just like Charlton, who also likes to keep his hand in all phases of acting. Well, I know Charlton is partial to television because that's where producer Hal Wallace discovered him. <laughs> yes, the play I was doing more or less took the place of a screen test for me. Hal is responsible for bringing some splendid talent to the screen. For his latest production, Come Back Little Sheba, he chose Shirley Booth, right from the stage play. Well, of course, Shirley would already won seven awards for his stage portrayal, and now she's won three more for performance in the film. Well, that certainly will set a high standard for other actresses, won't it, Wanda? Yes, indeed. I shall immediately join the circus as an acrobat. What for? <laughs> you need the exercise or something? <laughs> well, that's how Burt Lancaster started. And they're also talking about his getting an Academy Award nomination for Come Back Little Sheba. Well, Wanda, you'd win a nomination anywhere as one of our prettiest Lux girls. And that's something. Lux is a wonderful complexion care. I'm absolutely devoted to it. Irving, I hear you're keeping the next week's play a secret. Yes, it's a secret until Wednesday. Because next week's play is a very special event. It was selected by the Movie Goers of America in a nationwide poll for Photoplay magazine to determine the winner of its famous gold medal award for the most popular picture of 1952. And the name of that picture and its stars will be announced in the new issue of Photoplay, which comes out Wednesday, February 4th. Until then, I can only say, this is the play you've all been asking and waiting for. We certainly won't miss it, Irving. Good night. Good night. Good night, and don't stay away too long. Ken, listen to this little rhyme I've written. Smart girls double their stocking wear by using safe, gentle Lux Flakes care. <laughs> now, there's a rhyme that's worth remembering. Yes, always remember to use safe Lux Flakes care. It's stocking-saving magic. For when you start washing your stockings gently in those silky, pure Lux Flakes, you can actually cut your stocking runs in half. 
And it's just like getting an extra pair of stockings with every pair you buy. So take Libby's advice and never take chances by washing your stockings harshly in strong wash day products. When it's so easy to make one pair of stockings wear like two with gentle Lux Flakes care. You know, 95% of stocking manufacturers recommend safe Lux Flakes. And Lux Flakes are guaranteed the finest, safest care there is by Lever Brothers Company. So remember, you can double your stocking wear with safe Lux Flakes care. Try it, won't you? Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents, with an all-star cast, the picture voter that is the most popular of 1952. This is Irving Cummings saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in our cast tonight were Angela Clark as Serafina, Jeanette Nolan as the Countess, Edgar Barrier as Griffey, Lawrence Dobkin as Lunati, Jay Novello as Sandro, Nestor Paiva as Luigi, Tony Barrett as Carlo, Bill Justine as Acuto, and Herb Butterfield, William Johnstone, Jack Crucian, David Duval, Sharon Douglas, Bob Bentz, and Eddie Marr. Our radio play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was written and directed by Rudy Schrager. And now, let's listen to a familiar voice. Hi there. My name's Art Linkletter. You know, every day I get letters from ladies who have switched to New Surf. And they all agree it's a big help with wash day chores. And it is. You see, New Surf gives you that white, bright wash you expect of any good detergent, plus a couple of extras of its own. Why, you can see in your dishpan how much longer the suds last. A cupful of Surf goes further. And with those same lasting suds in your washing machine, New Surf leaves your clothes smelling fresh air sweet clean, clear through. I think you're going to like New Surf. Try it. And if you don't agree, send the box top to Lever Brothers New York and they'll refund your money. But I feel sure when you see how long the suds last and smell the sweet freshness of your clean surf wash, you'll say, I'll take surf every time. That's S-U-R-F, surf, the new improved detergent on your grocer's shelf right now. Lever Brothers Company unconditionally guarantees the quality and performance of Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes, Florident Toothpaste, and Surf, or your money refunded. This is your announcer, Ken Carpenter, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear America's most popular picture of 1952 as chosen by Photoplay Magazine. <laughs> this is the CBS Radio Network. And KNX Radio Los Angeles. It's light. It's golden clear. It's a truly fine pale beer. Burgermeister, Burgermeister, it's so light and golden clear. Burgermeister, Burgermeister, it's a truly fine pale beer. San Francisco Brewing Corporation, San Francisco. Listen for Lowell Thomas this evening at 8 on KNX Radio.